this video, I'm going to talk about the Kantorovich dual in optimal transport. So I'm going to start in the opposite end of what I did in previous videos. I'm going to start with the rigorous definition, and then I would give some, some remarks about how to think of it, some intuition. So as before, we're going to work in the setting of Polish spaces. We have x and y. We have our cost function here. Uh, and we have uh, a source measure and a target measure. I'm actually going to remove this assumption of continuity and replace it by a semi-continuity. Uh, sorry, so, so what I mean to say is uh, lower semi-continuous. Um, I am going to add another assumption, though, uh, a type of lower bound for the cost. So in addition to this, we're also going to assume that uh, the cost function is bounded from below by the sum of two functions, one depending on x and one depending on y, where each of these, a and b, are L1. So a as a function on x, it should be L1 with respect to mu, the source, and b should be L1 with respect to nu, the target. And I also want them to be upper semi-continuous. Then we have this duality result. Uh, and a duality, duality in optimization means that our optimization problem, which is a minimize, minimization problem, has the same um, infimum as the supremum of a dual problem. And the dual problem here uh, we're, op we're optimizing over functions phi and psi. Phi is going to be a function on x and psi a function on y. And they should both be L1 with respect to mu and u respectively. Uh, and they should satisfy the following. The sum should be less than or equal to the cost function. They should satisfy actually the same inequality as A and B does up here for all X and Y. And the function, the, the target function here is just the integral of phi with respect to mu plus the integral of psi with respect to nu. Now, one way of thinking about this is the following. So here we have our Cantorovich uh, problem here. I got my factories from the previous video here. My blue houses are factories, each factory producing a certain amount of goods. Then I have my consumers, the red houses here, with a certain demand at each point. And then Cantorovich problem uh, is, of course, the problem of finding a way of transporting all the goods from the factories to the consumers in the most cost-effective way. Now, the dual problem is, in some sense, can be thought of as outsourcing this problem. So instead of arranging the transport ourselves, there is a, we're meeting with a transport company. And this transport company, they want to strike a deal with us where they charge us um, not per mile and goods transported, but they're going to charge us a certain am amount for picking up goods in each location. And they're going to charge us, and for each of the target location, they're going to charge us a certain amount for dropping off goods there. So that means they're going to specify two functions, one function on X and one function on Y uh, containing this data then. So the transport company charges phi of x to pick up one unit of goods at x. And they charge us psi of y to deliver one unit of goods um, at y. Uh, moreover, they guarantee that this will be a good deal for us in the following way. 
namely by saying that whatever we pay them um, is going to be less than what we would pay ourselves if we organize the transport ourselves. In other words, what we pay them, which is for picking up one unit of goods at X and delivering it as Y, which is phi of X plus psi of Y, that should be less than or equal to the cost that we would pay if we transport one unit of goods ourselves from X to Y. And the fact that they're giving us such a good deal is gonna directly guarantee one inequality here. It's gonna guarantee that the infimum of what we would pay is definitely bigger than or equal to the supremum of what we, we would pay them if we hired them. Uh, the fact that we have equality here, it means that there is, um, there is a way for them to set their prices to, to specify phi and psi uh, in such a way that they will get arbitrarily close to what we would pay if we would uh, arrange the transport ourselves. So before I end this video, I want to um, show um, how, how to prove just one of the directions, uh, or basically to prove the lower bound in this theorem. As I mentioned before, it's, it's going to follow in a straightforward manner from this. But I still think it could be good to just show a proof to see how, how simple it becomes. I'm going to prove uh, this side of the of the two inequalities. So if we just pick one transport plan here, and we also pick um, two functions, phi and psi, uh, satisfying precisely the conditions up here. So in particular, then we want uh, uh, phi of x plus psi of y to be less than or equal to c of x comma y for all x and y. Then we check what is the cost of this transport plan. Well, from this inequality here, we get this is bounded from, from above by um, phi of x plus psi of y integrated against gamma. Sorry, what I meant to write is, of course, that this one is larger than or equal to this. And this integral we can break up into two integrals. We have phi of x integrated against gamma. Here we're integrating over the product plus uh, psi of y integrated over the product. But now the push forward, uh, that the fact that the push forward of gamma is to the x to the to x is mu, just means that the first integral here is just phi integrated integrated against mu, and the second integral. Since the push forward of gamma to y is mu, we get that this is just the integral of psi. Yes, mu. And that gives us um, this, this equality here. There is, uh, there is also a pretty beautiful interplay between these two problems. So I'm not gonna talk more about this in these videos. Um, I'm gonna, instead I'm gonna move on to, um, to the Wasserstein distance, namely the fact that this quantity or this one, if you'd like, uh, defines a distance, a metric on the space of probability measures. Um, 
but I'll just quickly as now mention a little bit about this interplay between these two problems. So there's the optimal transport plan here is actually characterized by a certain property called C-cyclical monotonicity. And in the case when X and Y is Rn and the, um, the cost function is just a square distance function, um, this uh, optimal transport plan is actually gonna be supported on the graph of the gradient of a convex function on Rn. That's going to be a property which characterizes the optimal plan among all other plans. And in the, this particular convex function is also going to be closely related to the optimizer in, well, the optimizers in this problem. Um, 